we will do some cabling. I know some of you have done that with me in the past, but okay, so let me switch. Okay. So this lab is really written for uh, practice reasons. I think Pompeia level 12 is not going to match you to design any kind of network. But as you design the network in GIS for me, you're going to find that you are going to learn a little bit more about your network. Um, there's no perfect design in any kind of network. Um, there's always a flaw in some kind of network. So if you aspire to be a network engineer, um, this is really the area that they look at. So from a security standpoint, when we come in and take a look at the network, we usually ask for some kind of diagram topology. Um, I did a few assessment where they actually give me the topology and then I would be able to identify and then there's some assessment that you have to do blind. Meaning that you don't know how the network is gonna be where the vulnerability is gonna be, so you have to assess. So um, there are quite a few tools that you can use. Microsoft has their own tool, which costs a lot. Um, but if you use Open Office, you can download a package that has all the network components, meaning the appliances, instead of drawing like, you know, um, circles and rectangulars and so on. But of late, you will find that there are a lot of tools that are available online. Some cost money and some doesn't, okay? So I test drove this with my non-credit class last fall, and they seem to really enjoy it. And you can be very creative in how you would design a network. The whole point in designing a network, number one, you want to strive for efficiency, right? You can't just be colorful and just throw stuff in. Right, we wanted to think about the practicality of the company or our home if you're designing a network for home. Second, um, you want to be able to think about how your data is going to go from one point to another. Okay, so if it's a, a blank slate where we would be using, um, we would design a network from scratch, let's say you have a blank, an empty building, and you are going to be able to put equipment in. That's gonna be really easy. Um, but if you are designing a network that's building on an existing network, you have to take a look at what kind of existing system you have, how is that gonna be expanding? And that's usually when you come in. Um, so to start, let's take a look at the actual website. So if you click on this link, okay, let me share a screen just in case people pop in there. Okay, so here is the interface and um, a lot of these resources, usually they're free. However, right, the, the, the pitch in this is that if you, if you buy their cloud storage, you're able to um, have, you know, images or, it's limiting to the free resources in that you can't download the, the image file or whatever that you need. Um, now, like I said, there are applications and tools that are out there. There are abundant of them. Um, I think it's a lot easier to use a specific application, but you can definitely use cloud-based. So I found, I tested many websites and I found that this one is, the, is somewhat user-friendly. So when you start with drawing, okay, you would click on this button and you're gonna see a panel like this, where that's where all your appliances are gonna be, okay? Now, are they gonna have all the appliances in the world? No, not necessarily. Sometimes you're gonna run into software that's not, hello, CIS 48? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and take a seat. We're just doing lab 1-1 right now. Uh, it's on Canvas. So you are gonna see that there, there might be software that won't have the sufficient image or the little icon that would represent a certain appliance. Um, so you're gonna have to make do with that. Uh, make sure that you label everything. Make sure that you have IP addresses on all of them or at least a range of IP addresses. So I'll show you how you can do that, okay? 
So we are doing the first exercise and what it's asking you to do is you have to think about your network at home that you're using now. You know, you can draw some of it now and then when you come home, you can take a look at it, see it and see how close you are and then you can make modification if you need to. So we know at home that we would have a wireless router, right? That really brings in the data and brings out the data from your network. So the router is your gateway. It is an appliance that's gonna control what's entering, that what, what comes in the network and what's leaving the network, right? Any network inside the network, the local area network, the personal area network, that's before the router. So if you're looking at RCCD network, like this network right now, right? Uh, they have a fiber box back there. All of these systems have to be connected to a switch, right? Because if you think about how, if, if I need to send data from here, I need to send it to an appliance and that appliance is gonna be able to send to another appliance and eventually the router and then the router routes that out. And beyond the router is usually your internet service provider, right? So your internet service provider like Spectrum, Frontier, all of those, they have their own switch network, right? And autonomous systems, which are routers that just pass packets. So what we see is we need to add in number one, your gateway, which is your wireless router at home. Okay, that's Wi-Fi. And that compared to a regular router is much smaller in scale, okay? And that's a little bit different than your business access point as well. So we'll talk about wireless later on. Um, for your computing systems at home, likely that if you are connecting wired, you would use an ethernet cable, right? Um, your router will come with some of the cable, you might buy some cable and then you would connect your system to that or you can connect it wirelessly, okay? And there's limitation in the number of system that you put. So um, I know at my home, we have 25 plus devices connecting to the wireless router. I also have appliances before the router for like storage and different things. Um, some people would put, um, you know, like a server so they can add in their media like movies. Some people they would put um, like, you know, a firewall or something, those tend to be a little bit more expensive if they are running a business from home. So when you click the website, you're gonna click the start draw button, okay? And then you always want to give your drawing uh, some kind of title, okay? So if it's for home network, you can say home network. Now, if you draw it for a business, for example, if I need to draw this room right now, you want to label for the location, right? Because somebody needs to take a look at that. The technician that needs to put everything in, they're gonna look at the diagram. They're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna connect all of these together. It's a map for them to be able to connect it, okay? And then, so label your drawing. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna drag and drop the component in. So let's take, let's take a look at our interface. So you're gonna click start drawing now. And this is cloud-based. So it's gonna pull your interface, right? It's a cloud application that they design. Sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's slow. Um, it depends also on your, your, on your connectivity as well. Okay, so it's gonna ask you for some kind of email, right? Cause it's free. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my, you can use an email that not normally for spam or something like that. Or your school email is okay. All right, sorry. <laughs> so, um, so now this type of, of, of system, this type of interface, this type of tool, you can also use it for like coding diagrams, flow charts, uh, project managers. They, you know, if you get into IT project management, you have to create a workflow for your employees and then track it and so on. So it already put this there for you. So we know that this is our Wi-Fi at home, right? 
and that's connected to the larger network. So whenever you see the cloud that just represent lots of different networks that would be representing ISP connecting together, right? Comcast Charter, uh, I'm sorry, Comcast and Cox own the most in the United States. And then you have like Spectrum, Frontier, AT&T. AT&T um, and Verizon, they are branching off to a lot more mobile base, but they do have a lot of landline that's, that's like that, right? Um, so when you take a look at the instructions, it tells you that um, you, it should contain your home network appliances. So select each of the network on the panel, okay? Now you can use the little lightning bolt to represent wireless. So if you have everything wirelessly, you can do that. On the left hand side, it, you can organize your, your folder. You can add images if you want. There's, you can search, so they have some icons there for you. Now, if you click this right here where it says flow charts, those are the shapes for the flow chart, so you can expand it, and then you can change it to a simple shape. So what I need to do is I need to search for network. And that's a quick way for you to kind of find the things that you need, um, you know, or you can do a search like workstation or computer or something like that. Um, so you would be able to find the, the shapes that you need. So here, let's say that I need to put in Cisco stuff, I would search for Cisco. If you need to draw that has cloud like Azure or Azure, some people call it like that, then you can search for that, right? Um, so it is searchable. What they do is they do a web interface with a, a database. So for you to be able to do that, okay? So let me see if I can find computer and I can put it there for you. Okay, so here's the computer. Um, so let's do a laptop computer. So you just drag it in. And if it's small, you can just pull it from the right like this, okay? And then I wanted to show that it's wireless, so I can just put the little lightning bolt right there. So it's basically drag and drop, okay? Now, if you want to label, you can just click edit text, and then you can say like laptop one or something like that, okay? Usually for companies, they would label it based on like how they want to name. So um, traditionally, most, most network engineer and administrator, they prefer to name it by the location. So for example, like these systems, they would say like PSC 16, you know, comp one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And you want to maintain a list of your system name that would correlate to the IP addresses. So the diagram is gonna really represent that as well, okay? So, um, now, if you wanted to put in, let's say like at home, you find your IP address is 192.168.0. Let's say three or 30, for example. Hi, how are you? Good. Okay. Then you want to put the IP address for the system. So what happens when you have a, a, a diagram for lots of systems? Right? Like I need to draw an overall diagram. Let's say that I have a facility that has 500 computers. You don't need to drag and drop 500 systems on there. You just put one computer and then in the text box, you want to indicate PC one to 500 and then the range of the IP addresses. Okay, does that make sense? Any questions? Okay. So here, what I have is I would have a laptop, okay? And the more you do this, the cleaner it's gonna look because you know I've seen diagrams when lines are overlapping each other, right? So you want, when you draw like a physical wire connection to a, a certain appliance, like a switch or a router, just make sure that it's clear. So other people, when they take a look at it, they know exactly how to go about finding that system. Why is that important? Because if there's a certain segment of the network that goes down, right, the engineers, they're going to take a look at the, the, the topology and they're going to say, oh, 
they need to go to, if you're looking at enterprise level, sec this segment under this branch location under here. They do have software that fully simulate this, right? Um, for network monitoring and things like that, you can also do it like that, okay? Any question? Okay, so for my home network, um, let's say that I have, I have a desktop. Okay, Brian, we're doing the lab one dash one, and and we're drawing a network diagram. Yeah, I just can't one on Oh, okay. Um, let me see if I can put the file on here on there for you, so you can use it. Okay, give me one second. So while we wait, you can um, continue to put your network together. Sorry, I'm getting old. It's hard for me to read from the screen these days. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. This is a USB that a student left. So it should say CIS 40A Word document on there. So we'll drop it onto your USB. Brian, if you need USB, there's some here. Okay. Sorry. Let's um go back to this. Okay. So let's say that if you need to have to put down like a desktop, let's say I have a Windows PC or something like that. And that's very common in the business environment. Let's say that I put this here, right? Um, on, I don't want, and you can do control Z to undo if you don't like it. Let me see if I, ha I can find something that's important devices. Cisco PC. Oh, why not? We'll just do a Cisco workstation. And you can always change this up on the label for it, right? So you can edit your text and then you can say, um, let's say gaming PC or something like that, right? Now, so I only have a few devices, so it's, it seems fine. I need to really draw some lines, okay? So what you can do is, let me see. You can use this connector when you click on the actual object, okay? Draw the connector, and then you can just put that there. Oh, sorry. I guess it's gonna have to go there. I'll go here, there you go. So there's these little dots around the appliance where you would be able to connect it. And then um, let's see if it has a tablet or something like that. Okay, so you can search for tablet and so let's say that we put another ta a tablet here and that's going to be wireless. So we can put a little bolt and then we can change the bolt to a smaller size. So if you click the this right here, it also gives you the menu that's very similar to that. Okay, to um, I'm sorry, to Word or, or um, Excel or Microsoft Office. Let me undo this. Mine is halting right now, but anyway, so you can put like the little symbol. Some of them will have like the actual wireless symbol. Uh, so you can add the wireless symbol and so on, okay? And then if you need to add text at the top, you can just click the T and then 
um, sorry. And then you can type in, type something where it says something. Undo that. Come on. Backspace. So let's say that we want to say home network. Like this. So, like I said, we want to also put in the name of your system, right? And you don't want to use the default name when you first start, you know, when you buy a PC, you turn it on, it gives you a really long name. Um, you, you should use something that's unique, right? You should never have a system that has the same, multiple system that have the same name on the network, that, that will be a conflict. The same thing with IP, okay? And we'll talk about the protocol for that later. So let's say that if I have a, an IP address, I can say, and that's usually the default, right? Let's say this is a 21. Okay. And so you can label your, your, your devices. You can put the IP address. And we can put arbitrary IP address for now, but realistically, we want to have the real IP address, right? Yeah. Let me see. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't let me pan. Um, let me see if I can pan it. Yep. And then like that. And you don't have to put it in the position I put. You can drop it anywhere on the canvas. And so that way, you know, as long as you, you have it clear. So network topology is important. Like I said, it gives us a map to how we would design a network, how we troubleshoot a network. Um, and it's important in the security area too that we would use it to really look at because the design will tell us whether it's going to be strong or it has flaw. Um, and so when the security engineer, they're going to take a look at that, they're going to say, okay, well, maybe I can add, you know, I can connect a security appliance here, like a firewall or, um, you know, some kind of intrusion detection system. And we have to find the appliance that's gonna have the available port for it to connect, okay? Any questions? So I haven't put up the videos yet. I, I've just been swamped with, I did scheduling and then all of this right before we start, they have so many changes. So I, I promise I'm gonna put up the lecture videos and everything that you need for this class in my, my 25 class. So traditionally, when they connect the system, so let's look at your role of computer, right? Um, let's say that I need to connect this system to this system and that system to another system. If it's going in like a straight line, right? Like what, there's like a linear connection, that will be like a bus. So that's what we call a bus topology. So think of a bus, the bus goes straight down the line. And back in the day, they didn't really have like a hierarchical network topology or the equipment to do that. So a lot of the things were peer to peer. So when I say peer to peer, it's just a computer that's equivalent in the role with another computer, right? Um, and then later on, what we have is we have more appliances. So they have a hub and the hub is just think of it like a repeater. It, it is like a switch. Um, So this is a small switch, okay? We don't really use a hub anymore because a hub is just, it's very dumb. All it is is take that signal and repeat it and send it to the rest of the system. So if Cynthia is sending data to the other system at the corner, what the hub does is it takes that data, repeats it, and then sends it out, right? It doesn't care if it gets there or not. Now, whether it's a managed switch or an unmanaged switch, at the level two of the OSI, we'll talk about the OSI later, 
you have a little bit more control in how your data will be used and you can control the port. So the port can be physical to the connection, right, where you connect the cable, or the port can be can be logical in that we would configure that on, on the actual appliance. Okay. So this is a small switch. And when you take a look at the switch, you would have this one has five ports. That means that I can connect five other systems to it. And then itself would then need to connect to another switch, right? So what we can do is we can expand it out from a router to a main switch, and that's usually what's on the rack, okay? So you see a tower rack like the one in the back, and they would have a router, a switch, and then there are a couple uplink switch and probably like different room that's going to send all the data to that main switch. Now, the attacker, when they come in from the router, what's going to happen is if you have one main switch, they're going to try to disable that switch and it, be, it just defeats your, your network. Okay, that's called a single port failure. So whenever I assess the topology or when I look at the rack, I look at the topology and I say, okay, where can they come in and what point are they gonna hit and it's gonna take down the network. So if it's your corporate network and you have 50 locations that's connecting back to that switch, right? I used to work for a company that did that. They have everything, they filter everything, they screen everything that you do. So it comes back to the main switch and that main switch sends out to the router so everything funnels back and what happens is it's gonna be extremely slow at one point, right? Like when everybody's on. So think about if you're on a 10 lane highway and you come back to one lane, right? You merge everybody into one lane and that one lane sends everybody out. Of course, it's gonna be slow. So that's what we call a bottleneck in the network, okay? So at home right now, you do have a single point failure in that, if this router is down, you've got no internet connection, right? Nothing comes in, nothing goes out, okay? Now, in a network environment for a business, we would then make more sense for us to put in multiple, like a backup line, okay? Now, the backup line can also impose vulnerabilities too, right? Um, so back in the day, the White House was attacked a long time because they have a backup dial-up line that goes into one of the rooms as a backup. Target was attacked because there was an HVAC line, right? So your alternative line, you gotta be really careful about that. It's good, yeah, you have redundancy and you have a backup way to send your data in case it goes down. So some company they'll go with satellite, some company they'll go with like a secondary dedicated line. And we'll talk about like how that's shared and dedicated. Right, the stuff that you get from home, you know, everybody tells you like bio, fiber, buy this, it's great, it's fast, or whatever. You're driving in a shared lane with everybody on that street that you live on. Okay. It's not going to be fast when all the homes, they're streaming and playing game and all of that. It's still going to be dispersed, it's distributed. So when you, you consider the appliance that you are going to scale for the larger network, Think about the number of ports that you're connecting, okay? So if I have eight systems, is this going to do? No, right? There's only five because if you count up the ports. So you would go with, so the, the switches that you normally see, this is kind of rare that they have five ports. Okay, you're going to see eight, 16, 24, 64, okay? Um, if, you, if you ever walk back there, you're going to see the, the larger switches, the Cisco switches, they are going to be like those, okay? So on a segment like this, what they normally do is they would put like a couple switches with 24 ports, okay, to connect all of these roles together. And then those switches go to another larger switch, right? And then that, that larger switch, switch connect all the rooms together. And then that becomes a segment for Marino Valley College, and then eventually a main switch and then a route. And that's how that's how the network is. So this is just a little practice for the home. Okay. So let's do one for 
Um, let's do one for like um, a, a small business so you can you can have some practice. Okay, so I have three exercises for you to do. The first one is for home and then make sure that you answer this question. What type of wireless router is used in the home network? And you don't have to give me the exact model, right? So if you take a look at the router, it'll tell you like Motorola or whatever, you can just be in the ballpark, that's fine. But in a real network environment, you want to have a list of inventory of all the model number, the type of systems that you're using, because in case that you need to have replacement or a set, you know, usually we keep a secondary just in case that that's down. If that's the main system, then we want to make sure that we have a system that's backed up. So if, you know, it crash or if it dies or whatever you have in place. So the, the managed appliances in the network environment, it's RAM dependent. Sometimes RAM can run low and you have to buy the RAM for that model and so on. So um, they all have processor, they all have RAM, they are a computing system on their own. Um, and you see a lot of that nowadays. Okay, so make sure that after you did, you've done the drawing, take the screen capture and the way that you do your screen capture is you would do all print screen, press those buttons together like this, okay? And all print screen, just take a, a, an image of your active window. And let's say I need to paste it here. I would then do control V or paste and it's gonna give me the whole, the print screen there, okay? So after you've done your drawing, take a screen capture and then ask, answer the questions. So normally your, your wireless router handles about 125 devices, about 127, 125 devices. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a household that have that many, right? Unless they're mining Bitcoins or something like that, but never ever, okay? Um, normally you would see about, you know, maybe a few to 25, 30 appliances at the most, if you have a lot of people using a lot of things um, there, you know, TV, everything is wirelessly done, uh, connected now. And then the operating system, it could be a mix, it could be Linux, Mac OS, Windows, and so on. So, do, and, and even Android, right? And iOS. Okay, so make sure we answer the question. All right, so let's do the next one. This one, I already give you a list, okay? You have a router, a regular wired router. And normally the router doesn't have a lot of ports like, like these guys, okay? The router is only gonna get, have either one or two in the front. And then the newer router will have a fiber optic in the back. Okay? Some of the routers will be like ethernet. They move like that. Okay, so the switch you're gonna see a lot of connection in the front like this. And some of the switch when they say it's managed switch, that means that it has an operating system that are, are some kind of software tool that you can manage it. Right, like you can turn off the ports. So, so a good way to really control security is to physically turn it off or logically turn it off. So, people walk by and they try to plug a cable in, right, to get on your network, it won't work, right? You can also logically controlling it by filtering IP and other things. So, there's many ways you want to layer your security anyway. Okay, so you need to have two switches. And for this one, you don't have to have like a high number of port switch. I can do like a 16 port or an eight port. You don't have too many excessive ports either. Um, but if you're thinking about growing your network, you want to have some extra ports. So you can buy new printers or more printers, more system, and you can add it, okay? Um, and then the devices for this small company, we only have two laptop and two mobile devices. So that means, that we have to plug the wireless access point to our switch, okay? 
so that you have to drop the, the, the wireless on there. And then they have two printers. And for a company, I don't, I usually don't recommend using wireless printer. Number one, they're slower. It's just harder to manage um, unless they're mobile, like they have to move around the facility a little bit. Um, so you often see like copier and printers either all in one device and they are connected to the ethernet using ethernet cable. And then they have like the physical voice over IP phones, okay? So keep in mind that voice over IP phones use voice over IP switch. I know that on the drawing, you might not have the VoIP switch. You can just put a switch, <clears throat> but, but real life, realistically, you know, when you buy the phone system, right, they're connected to the actual switch that converts. What it does is it, it would take your voice that you speak, right, and encapsulate it. So it, it changed analog signal and, and digitize it, and then it switch it out. And that's how voice over IP works, okay? And you have this at home built into your router too. Um, and then you have a server, okay? So I'm just gonna preview uh, uh, an easy, like a, a, a simple one. Let me see if I, if it saves this. Okay, so make sure you can also give it a title if you wanted to save that for later. Let me see if I can manage it with the folder here. Workspace, class updated. Let me reopen this. Are we almost running out of time? It's such a short lab session. I asked them to put two hours into, so it doesn't make, but they didn't. I don't know if they have another class after this, but I do have a class at six. Okay. Um, let me see if I can reopen this. Network diagram. Okay, so this is another one. Um, this one is um, called Visual Paradigm, and they already have some pre made like templates for you to use. Often you're going to see that. The cool part about it is you can you can pull some of the templates and then add things to it and to make it your own. Um, so you already have like some of the lands like this. Okay. So let's say that I, I choose this one because it looks like something that I can use for the second one. And then so it's going to pull the templates for me. Okay. So here I have a hub and a switch. You see that? And then I have the printer, the laptop, the PC. So you just need to add a few more things to it and then you'll be done for the second one. Right? You need to add a router. So you might, the router is going to connect to this switch right here. And then I have an, an IP phone and, um, you know, they, the, in the assignments, it mentioned that you have multiple IP phone. That means that it could be in different offices. So you might want to, you know, if you want to group them together, just make sure that you label them. Okay. So you can definitely use a pre-made template just to simplify your life. And then if I need to add system, I just drag and drop it in here. And then I can label the PC. You can say like PC1, PC2, PC3, and then, you know, an arbitrary IP address for now. But in, in a subnet, you want to keep the IP address uniform, right? You want to start with one and then you want to, one is usually reserved for the router, right? Like the other appliances are two, three, four, five, six. And then the PCs usually is where we would have the dot higher number. So what do I mean? So let's say that my IP address is 10.10.0.x, .10 right? This is a, we'll talk about IP address later, but um, we it would be like 50, okay? Um, and then my switch, that would be like a dot one or dot four or something like that. 
And those are static internal private IP. The reason why that we want to keep the appliance a little lower by practice is just easier for us to really think about how you're entering the network from the router. The router is the first appliance that you see that's going to be dot one. And then the next switch, your main switch is going to be a dot two. Let's say I have a firewall, that's a dot three. I have intrusion detection, that's a dot four. And then the rest of my, my, my PC, I can start at 100 and I can go up to 150 or something like that, okay? So you want to be really thoughtful about how you're using your IP address and how you are implementing that with your actual design for your network, okay? Um, so on this right here, if you can't find the things that you want, you can put your cursor on here. Load balancer is used when you have a lot of traffic where it can offset it. So instead of like, I, I would have like two side of the network instead of sending it to one side of the network, I can have it dispersed. So, um, and the way that we would control that is with configuration. We'll play with that later, okay? And, and so, you know, and if you need to search, let's say I need to put router and I can't find the router, I can, I can have it loaded. Okay, and so often that you would see that they would use a symbol like this, like the arrows, that's common with like Packet Tracer or DNS3, the software that allows you to simulate the network, you often see that. They, you know, the appliance would look something like this, but in a lot of network diagram, you would see it like this. Okay, so get used to looking at like, like a cylinder with the, the arrows pointing. That means in and out, and it's able to, to have receiving and sending at the same time, simultaneously. Okay, so if I need to put a router, let's say that um, this is a wireless one, right? I can add the wireless router onto this switch right here, and I would connect it. Okay, and then I need a regular router so if, if I want to write, so this is the voice router, it'll tell you which one. The router with the firewall, wavelength router. So if I just want a regular router, I would have a regular router and then I would connect it from this guy to this guy right here. Okay. Let me see on this one how, um, I forgot how it uses the connector. And you can add the text by doing the plus button. So if you wanted to add more label. Um, it's usually it just let you do. They change the interface once in a while too. Do you have any question for me? So we can just design our own network the way we want. Yep. Oh. I know because it is confusing because it, there's a different types of templates, but it's just how they design it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can use the existing template, modify it. You can uh, you can um, make your own template if you want. Um, so eventually you're gonna see that you're gonna have a lot of your own template. And then, so let's say that you become a network engineer and they tell you, oh, we, we just bought a facility, we are gonna expand. And you want to be kind of uniform across. So. Um, you already have a branch and you're building another branch, so you just take that design and modify it. But you also need to take a look at the physical building, right? Is if, it, if it's not the same, um, that makes a difference in how you physically connect the system, okay? Where the elevator is, because you drop line through the elevator, and then, yeah, and, and also where the closet, which where all your racks is at. So the physical facility is very important as well 
So even if you design the network the same and then you do the site, right? This the the you test out the site, you check it out, and it's not it's not exactly like the other one, then you have to make some modification. But you already built the template so you can easily modify it. They have also tools for you to actually draw the rooms, and then you can show like the 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 systems that are connected. Um, I used to teach for a school that has bachelor degree in information systems, um, networking and security, and the students that finish those programs, they have to provide, um, you know, the panel of faculty, like the design and all the network with the, all the security, everything in place. So Cal State San Bernardino, they, they, they replicated the idea um, and, and so on. But this kind of give you the basics on how you would be able to kind of draw. So in case you need to, you can, okay? And like I said, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. There's no perfect design, okay? All right, questions? The, well, because so, switches are different. Some switch are designed to connect systems together. Some switch are designed to connect to other main appliances like router and switches. They have different ports and you want to use one to manage the rest. Um, yeah, you want to manage it. You want like a an, an higher hierarchical distributed type of network environment. Okay, so it's like if you want to turn off that back, or network, Right. Imagine if I have like a hundred switch and they're all interconnecting together and I'm not able to manage a hundred switch, it becomes very chaotic because when you're under attack, you don't want to go and unplug a hundred switches. It's ridiculous, right? You want to, to just unplug one port from one switch and it's going to disengage all the other ones. Yeah, data center, that's how they do it. Um, and then when we unplug that one, we want to bring up the other line at the same time so that way our customers are not going to call and complain and say, I have an outage, you know. So in the case where if you're doing IT services, that's what you do. Like when you think about Amazon, it's just thousands of racks, right? Uh, how many do they have now? I think they have 65 data centers around the world. And that's what they do to host all of these things, AWS. Yeah, I'm getting certified in AWS training, like for the academy. So eventually we'll offer some stuff with DevOps. Okay, questions? What's the time right now? I think you guys finished about this time, right? Like an hour. I don't want to hold you longer than you should. Um, so does having like multiple routers make your internet more faster? Um, usually you only have maybe backup router and a regular router, one router. Like, but you do have, you can have multiple gateways. Um, you can offset it, but a lot of the times, you know, traditionally all, all the administrator that are operating now, they were trained like how I was trained is you manage it at one, one source. But yeah, you do have, um, what you can do is you can set up proxy and proxies are like, um, think of it, they're like traffic police. So when you have congestion, the proxy, what it does, it, it, it you know, it, it can that, uh, regulate the traffic that way. Um, or you can also set up like ways to offset your, 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 your load, your balance in, in your network. Um, so your network, ideally 99.99% uptime, right? A lot of the times realistically, you, you see like in most network, it's a little under, okay? Some networks is 92%. For security, we want the, the five nines, that's what they call it, but that's ideal. Okay. So your design plays an important role in it eventually, right? Uh, it can be poorly designed. I've seen closets that's just horrible in, in wiring and everything else. Uh, one of my former students, he was hired to completely rewire the closet, but it took him six months, yeah, for a facility. And you know, and you want it to be like, you know, we'll talk about cable next time, but you know, uniform in color, you know, labeling, everything that's gonna be nice. So when you unplug something, you know exactly, not like the crazy spider web that, that sometimes happens. Okay.
All right. Let me check the time for our. So uh, one of the things I wanted to point out before we take off. Okay, so make sure that you work on this and then answer the question, okay? Your notes is gonna be helpful. The chapter, it talks about bus, star, ring, mesh, and hybrid, um, what they are, and I'll, I'll create the video and post that up. Um, the access point, we talked about how that could, should be connecting to the switch. If the business want to expand, all you have to do is just to make sure that you have the available port connecting to your switch. So if you don't, you have to buy new appliances that are able to, to connect more, okay? Or you can buy, you can expand on the wireless side. So many companies do that because it just kind of reduced the cost with the cable and everything else, okay? Um, the third one is you can use any of the tools and what, what I wanted to do with this one is I give you a higher scale. So this is a larger network. So think of it like a corporate office and they would have more devices. I don't need you to draw 20 laptops or 20 computers or 50 phones, right? Just draw one and then put in, you know, phone one through 50 and then arbitrary IP addresses there, okay? And the servers, sometimes they are different, but a lot of the times we would just label the servers by its role, email, uh, the, like domain name system, um, you know, web server, all of that. So you, you can just think about what they would need. Usually they would have web, right? They would have database, they would have email, uh, they would have file, things like that. Any question? Okay. If you like doing this, right? I used to love drawing topologies um, because you know it's fun. Um, you can also use Open Office, and like I said, just Google Open Office Network Packages. You can download; it's free. Um, so you have to install Open Office first. It's like Google Docs, right? And then you just add the packages, and you should be able to have the, all the appliances. Because Microsoft tools, I try to get it for, for this school right here. It's, I think it's like $200 per license. Um, they didn't want to buy it. So. Okay. Oh, I still have five minutes. <laughs> Any questions? No question? One with proxy, yeah. you can use either the, the, yeah, some appliances have the capability to set up proxy. Okay. Um, and so like in some network we would have, you can use like a computer system to make it a proxy. Um, and, or you can have a specific appliance to make it a proxy, right? Okay. Um, and then, yeah, <laughs> so you would have it as a dedicated address and every all the traffic will be either, you know, so it would recognize the traffic and it would be able to send that out. Um, now you you want to have multiple proxy in the case of a larger network. So some network would have 100, 10, a few. Um, I know school district, they use proxy quite a bit. Um, and, you know, you know, like sometimes when they block kids from accessing like YouTube or whatever, the kids, they find out where the proxy is. So they would just connect the system to the proxy and the proxy, its job is just to regulate that traffic, right? So it's like the cop saying, oh, you can go this way or you can go this way, right? Mm -hmm. If this way is there's traffic, go this way, right? That's what it does. So, so what happens is when they connect to the proxy, it's still gonna pass it out. And so, because what happened, they don't control the policy on the proxy, but they control the policy on the link router. So, you know, so there are ways to bypass stuff. So when I do security assessment, I also have to take a look at what they're setting up, how, how it's passing the traffic. So those are the things that you want to look at um, overall network and how all of these systems and how the rules for these systems are in place. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. 
No other questions? So on Thursday, we are going to do tabling, right? Um, I know some of you already took my CS25, but it's a good review for you. Um, I have an alternative assignment for the students that can't do the tabling. The videos on it is actually decent. It talks a little bit more about like, uh, you know, if we have time, then we'll do the punch down so you would know how to do salt socket um, with the patch cable. You know how all the new homes have the, the RJ45 installed already, right? There's no more phone line on the new home. So I'll, we, we bought some equipment uh, for punch down tools. So if you do have time, but I want to make sure that you know how to run cable or make cables if you run cable because we do have a partnership with Sawyer's that looks for that. They specifically ask for that because they install networks and you have to know that. And they're not going to buy pre-made cable for you. I know it's really cheap from China. My students tell me that all the time. Like, why are you teaching us to make cable when we can just buy like, you know, a bunch of them? But it doesn't work like that with a lot of businesses. So they'll give you a role and then you have to learn them, especially from the closet. Like I said, sometime in elevator shack. So you have to um, go, like, that's how we go from one floor to another. Okay. And we would use fiber for the most part when, when you have like all right. So when you go from one floor to another floor, you would do a fiber. Okay. If they can afford it. But back in the day, we would do a collapse. Um, I used to, I used to install a bunch of those and my job, because I was small, was I used to do the crawl hole between the, you know, this is a, a drop ceiling, so I would have to crawl through and then run the cable and do these walkie talkie back in the day. So, hey, you know, it's here, and then I would patch it down to the wall and there would be other technicians, and that's how we did it. Um, but that type of job can run from $150 to $250. If you ever call people to come and, and do cable drop like an electrician or communication technician, they charge a lot. I got offered, um, one of my colleagues asked me to come over to this house and run some stuff. And even my friend who now works for Spectrum, he's a manager there. He won't do it because it's just sometimes it's such a hassle to pull all the stuff out and then putting in some new stuff. So. Um, we just have the amazing company. But if you work for those companies, if you know how to do fiber, minimal, your, your base start is $50 an hour if you're certified. It's, it's a good business. We paid, we paid $6,000 for them to, to dig from um, the parking lot over to this room. And then we pay a few more thousand dollars for them to put the box in. Uh, like, you know, they have like certain approved vendor that they use here. So I think they would know when they're done, I can check them out. But that's the activity. So I have, before we kick off, I do have some kids. I try so hard for, so this is Panduit um, called Black Box. And um, you can use, they're so smart now, you can use, with these tools now. So this is an OptiCam. It's used for fiber optics. And then we'll play with it in this class. I bet you RCC doesn't have this. <laughs> and RCC, they can probably watch my YouTube videos and see. Yeah, so, um, but this is cool. So you are the first one to use these, right? And then we have some, some stuff for you. So we'll do some fiber stuff. That's why I asked you to come in. Otherwise, um, you can just do a lot of online things. Okay. Any question? All right. I'm hoping to hang out for a little bit at five o'clock. I'm going to be in my office because I don't know if they schedule this room for another class or not um, for office hours. But if you want to leave, you can just grab some chips before you go. And have a good evening and I'll see you Thursday.